In this video, I'm gonna explain the many different ways that artificial intelligence has actually integrated itself into Israel's military strategy and what it means going forward for the future of artificial intelligence and war. And look, I hate covering this stuff for a few reasons. One, because it's just so clear that if we treat artificial intelligence like a baby child, this is not the kind of thing that we want to train it on. And also, war is just ugly and sort of pointless and it's just not the way humanity is gonna to get to a long-term healthy future with this kind of technology. I mean, I can't imagine anything worse to apply artificial intelligence to, except maybe like, like just literally human torture or something. This is not good stuff. But I also understand that this is it's just like not realistic for me to believe that like we're all gonna get on the same page all of a sudden on this. And there's no use in burying my head in the sand because I know artificial intelligence is simply intertwined with everything that humans do and military and war is just part of that human nature. And hopefully one day we figure out ways to get over it. That's why I'm so big on the different ways we can use AI to help govern citizens. But for right now, it's the military funding that's actually pushing the cutting edge of artificial intelligence in many respects. So in this video, we're gonna investigate the way that AI is actually integrated into modern warfare so that you can better understand the risks and challenges that we're gonna be facing a lot more of going forward. So first off, let's look at why Israel's military, their integration of artificial intelligence in their battlefield strategy is so unique among the major governments. Israel really has spent the last decade modernizing their warfare strategies with computational techniques that just really aren't something that you can say about Russia, Ukraine, or Hamas. Now, according to the Center of Security and Emerging Technologies, which actually recently put out a report on this topic, it's clear that proportionally, more money has been poured into AI integration of a military in Israel than almost any other countries besides the United States and China. In fact, the United States is the primary partner or the funder of a lot of these military Israeli advances. Think about it like this. Besides Israel's own government putting a high proportion portion of their military budget into cutting edge AI technology and encouraging the ecosystem around it, meaning startups and education, 30% of the deals and 61% of the funding still come from the United States. Now, on top of that, some of the allies, the countries that are very friendly with the United States across Europe have also been big investors in Israeli AI technology. And this has been building up for decades. So now that Israel has actually said that they are at war with Hamas, it's the first time we're seeing what does this technology actually look like when it's implemented on the battlefield. Before I break down the different ways AI has been integrated in the military, I wanted to take one second to talk about the way China's relationship with AI and Israeli military works. So even though China hasn't been investing like by giving as much money to these Israeli companies, they do have their own way to kind of mimic, clone, and integrate their technologies into Israel's military. They like to get involved in forming partnerships and transferring technological IP back to their country. So what they do is they sometimes buy a foreign company a company that has some kind of a skill set or knowledge base that they want their military to understand. Which leads to all sorts of tricky situations where like it's not exactly clear who's got control of what data, where the servers are being stored, how the technology is being built and component wise in China and then being brought over to the military. But in the long run, that's part of the way they suck all of that information into their military. So looking forward, everybody needs to be very careful because with a lot of these technologies, reverse engineering it means that you're only a handful of months behind your competitor. So now let's talk about this insane new artificial intelligent powered tank that Israel has. So the Israeli Defense Ministry has revealed the Barrack tank. This is a very advanced tank and it's just being shown to the world after about five years of R&D. This tank has now joined the ranks of Battalion 52. It boasts an AI enhanced targeting system and it comes with something called the Iron Vision helmet system, allowing the driver of the tank to look around in all three dimensions and be able to see everywhere around him. Oh, and the AI based Windbreaker missile defense system, which works a little bit like a tiny iron dome, looking for what kind of projectiles might be incoming and blocking them ahead of time. It's got cameras and state-of-the-art sensor technology mounted all around the outside of the vehicle, which gives me a lot of vibes like how Tesla self-driving works, except the opposite. Instead of not crashing into anything, it can figure out what it needs to run over and destroy. Another really interesting way that they used AI in the system is for the tank treads. So the cameras have an awareness of what kind of environment they're in. They've been trained on many different situations and they can independently control those tank treads depending on what they need to go over, what kind of like acceleration they're at, probably what kind of angle they're at, and all sorts of interesting variables, the same way that a Tesla car realizes the environment that it's in. Now let's talk about what's probably the most 
famous thing that the Israeli military is known for, and that's the Iron Dome. So this is a system that uses predictive analytics and machine learning. And the goal of the Iron Dome is to see something traveling at the speed of a missile make a prediction about where it's headed and actually intercept it with another missile. Making a decision like this is absolutely beyond human control. Only something like an AI could be accurate enough to move at those kind of speeds with that kind of accuracy. So the Iron Dome is predominantly a giant artificial intelligence prediction machine that's been trained to calculate trajectories and other variables that might throw off a trajectory. Then anticipate an impact point launch a system and make sure that it's continually adjusting until it hits that. I mean, the fact that it works at all is astounding. I mean, this is really an interesting use case for artificial intelligence. And this really does seem like one of those things where you would say it's artificial intelligence. This is an intelligent machine making a decision all on its own in the sense that these are real battlefield decisions and they have to be made in subhuman timeframes. I mean, if there is a human in the loop on that situation, that's somebody who's just got an instant to press a button and it might not even exist actually. But the system has showcased some remarkable defense. The Israeli military says that it has a 90% success rate, which means that a lot of innocent civilians have been saved by the Iron Dome. And this machine learning algorithm, this AI algorithm that makes all these decisions, it's very tuned to what kind of object that it needs to blow up because it can't just hit it from any angle. It can't hit something that's not a missile that's incoming. So it understands when a projectile is coming in, what kind of size it should be, what kind of speed it should be at, what the weather conditions mean for how it's gonna hit that target. And these are substantial distances, up to 70 kilometers. I mean, these are the kind of data that was once like meticulously analyzed and these decision-making teams in the control center used to think about. And the fact that they've in some ways successfully offset a decision like this, I think is symbolic to where the entire world's AI-based military is gonna be going. And there's some interesting claims from Hamas about some kind of rockets that have had success that have gotten through the Iron Dome and how sometimes doing much more low-tech things that this AI has hasn't seen before have been the successful way to get through it. Another way that the military's integrated artificial intelligence is through something called Fire Factory AI, which you can think of as basically an AI-based logistics system. In fact, this is something similar to what we've seen with Amazon. Like in fact, when we order things on Amazon, we're also giving it a signal to what our neighbors might want. And from Amazon's point of view, that's an artificial intelligence system that's making a decision to move extra product close to us because it thinks our neighbors might be buying it next. A little anecdote here, but it reminds me of how in the Civil War, the North had a certain advantage by using railroad tracks to move troops around. And because they could sort of surround and move them in ways that were beyond the speed of human foot traffic, they were able to utilize all sorts of advantages in different battles. And I think the same thing with artificial intelligence might be possible for the Israeli government. Now, when it comes to actually finding a target, that's always an issue. Like you do not wanna be hitting civilians, but sometimes that can be a difficult plan. Now, in the middle of war, one of the worst things you can do is have casualties, like innocent people who don't wanna be part of the war, they're not fighting the war, they shouldn't be at the same kind of risk as people who are in the military. But there's an advantage for people to sort of hide among them also. So that's where this artificial intelligence called Blue Wolf, which is a counter-terrorism technology tool, comes into play. It's a comprehensive database of facial images that have been tagged to people based on their behavior. Now, the goal from the military's point of view, of course, is to minimize the potential terrorist threats. Now, the tool has been operational for the last two years, and of course, we don't exactly know how useful it is or what is actually been done with it, they claim that it has been really important in their fight. But you can imagine that this is the kind of thing that in the right hands might be helpful, but in the wrong hands could be way too much government power for most situations. I mean, anytime I think about the government getting like a massive repository of facial images, knowing who all the citizens in a country are and scoring them or ranking them or putting them in an AI system to have some kind of a, a prediction about them, I'm always like very weary about this. I can definitely see the advantages, especially in a military setting, but it also is just like ethical landmines everywhere. But once again, this is a future that we have to get used to. Like there is no way that every American isn't on some kind of list, probably in multiple governments that have multiple similar systems. And if Israel is doing this like ground invasion and there can be some kind of an AI our goggle or some way to scan somebody and say, I definitely know you're a citizen, you're safe, I definitely know you're a terrorist, then we need to take you in or whatever, like, 
I guess that's good, but you can just see how slippery the slope gets. So obviously AI is revolutionizing warfare the same way it's revolutionizing so many aspects of our world. And like all of them, it simultaneously pushes us forward. It becomes new opportunities and new tools, but also more risks, things that we really need to be educated and engaged with. Now the utilization of these auto-targeting smart tanks, facial recognition in identifying potential terrorists, predictive algorithms destroying incoming missiles, and autonomous machines that are making completely autonomous subhuman level decisions in some cases begs for intense scrutiny education and regulation and if you felt like you learned anything from this video my next goal is to get to 8,000 subscribers so i'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button